Michael, how you doing? Hey, another week. Another week, another show. I feel like another I should week, add another show. some dramatic music, you know, like some kind of theme song. We have theme music. Is that the, I, don't, I think that's probably not in the budget. No, we don't. We don't have it yet. <laughs> yeah, I got this new uh, tripod. It set me back. I don't know. This thing's like it moves when you move or something. So wow, like, whoa, that's whoa, cool. Whoa. But you're not moving. And then, well, I'm moving the tripod. So it simulates. Movement. So I don't know. I guess it doesn't move. I don't know. <laughs> what the hell do I know? <laughs> Speaking of something else that doesn't move, it seems like Congress. They do a lot of talking, but. That's just about it. Well, uh, what do we call this one? Theater? I'm calling this one theater of the absurd. It's well, ridiculous. I uh, had Larry every time you and think the swamp waiters, but uh, Larry seems to be tied up. I guess he'll join us momentarily. Well, yeah, he'll, he'll jump in, and if he doesn't, uh, um, there's still plenty to talk about. And uh, and um, I have to be honest with you guys out there. I, I've kind of taken a step back from the insanity. I, I can't. I, I reached my breaking point. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Remember that show? Uh, the guy opens up the window and he says, "I'm mad as hell and I can't take it anymore." It was called Network. Yeah. Do you remember Network? I mean, about I know news. that clip. That it was about the news business. Right. The movie was Network, and the guy was like a, a broadcaster for a new, on TV. And he, and he, he, nothing was changing. He was always reporting the news and nothing was changing. And he just opened the window and he told people to open the window and yell out, I'm mad as hell and I can't take it anymore. And uh, I think like Twitter, I think it's, I just, something happened to me on Twitter. I said, I can't do this every day. It's making me so crazy. Yeah. Not making me crazy, for instance, but it's, it's so negative. There has to be something, a balance. And it's tough to spend all day on Twitter and then go out and spend time with your family or something like that and have some type of a meaningful relationship if you feel like you want to take a wiffle ball bat to most of the people that you see on the street. <laughs> uh, it's probably not, not in, a, in, in a playful way, you know, just a little rap on the back of the legs or something. <laughs> nothing, nothing too violent. Just, just it's a wiffle ball, ball bat. Wiffle it's a wiffle ball, ball bat. Yeah. If you want to... You don't have to use the skinny yellow bat. You can get the big fat Albert bat, the red bat. That doesn't I like hurt that as bad. One. Yeah. We used to yeah, used to take like a fat Albert bat right to the you know the backside if something happened out on the street. So get the bat, whack, you know. But if you really messed up when we were playing stickball or something, you get the broom handle to the back of the back of the legs or the the skinny yellow. Um, Wiffle ball bat, which, by the way, I see that they sell in the grocery store now. It's still four bucks with the ball. Hang on. It's Larry's the... calling me. Should I? Yeah. Let me just. See you hey, Larry, we, we got you on speakerphone. We're live here. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. You yeah. ready to call into Skype? Yeah, just call in. I'll, I'll... Okay. The uh, yeah, I'll call you. Okay. We'll hook it up. Okay. People are getting a good uh, behind the scenes thing here. This is like a documentary. Exactly. This uh, is how we you're... actually do things. They don't know that you and I are on on the phone for three hours before the show talking right. about everything. That's right. Well, this for is hours. how the sausage gets made, hours. Mike. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't think I like the word sausage in this situation, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that's that what Hillary call. Clinton said? That you, you get to see the sausage getting made? I don't or think you... she gets to see too much sausage. Hey, but that's there's just Larry. Okay. According to the Secret Service. Hey, Larry. Larry how you doing, Mike? Back to the program. Lovely to have you Thank with God us. Thank God Larry's on. The conversation was... <laughs> it was, was waning. It was going downhill quickly. But, uh, yeah, it's it, good to have you on. Always Thank you. Always exciting to be with both of you guys. Now, Larry... I said... Uh, okay, go ahead. Well, just been so much going on with yeah. uh, William Barr testifying before Congress today. Devin Nunes giving these uh, criminal referrals while he's simultaneously bringing a multitude of seemingly pointless, fruitless, almost guaranteed to fail lawsuits from Stephen S. Biss. What, uh, what's your take on all this swampiness, Larry? You mean the mannequin Biss? Ooh, can you turn the mic down just a touch, Larry? Okay. All right, yeah, yeah, the mannequin Biss, exactly. Biss, yeah. You see that in Brussels? I've seen it, yes. Uh, very famous, yeah. In any event, you're right. Uh, unfortunately, the way things are, the past is a prologue. 
it's very nice that Nunes is making these criminal referrals. I would hope that they would succeed, but they never succeed because it goes into the black hole, the deep state of the Justice Department. The establishment protects each other. They may burn a few lower-level people, middle-level people, but it'll never rise up the level of Hillary Clinton or James Comey or McCabe or Strzok or Page or Rosenstein or the rest of them, and that's why we have our citizens' grand juries. But, you know, I've been doing this for 25, 30 years, and I've seen it over and over again. And what Nunes basically is doing right now, it's fundraising. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's trying to raise money for his next. Uh, he's trying to get out there and, you know, and pound his chest. And I'm great. I'm doing all these things. And the bottom line is this. I went to him years ago with a whistleblower who had evidence of mass surveillance of the American people. You know, the chief justice of the Supreme Court, of other justices, of judges, of Trump, of everybody else. And he turned a blind eye. He wasn't interested in that. Hmm. Uh, but he's interested in this because now he's riding the wave. You know, with President Trump saying we want to strike back, well, the president should take matters into his own hands and not rely on Devin Nunes. Now, you know, it's good that he's raising the issue. It's good that he's raising the profile of these questions. But I don't want the American people to be fooled. The very fact that he's on Hannity each night tells you everything. Because nothing ever happens after anyone, whether it's Sarah Carter, whether it's John Solomon. I like John, by the way. But nothing happens. It's just promotion for Fox, and it's promotion to boost their ratings as the ratings of CNN, MSNBC, and NBC are sinking uh, at the present time. So I don't want people to be fooled by it. Support Freedom Watch. We're actually trying to do something with hard-hitting cases in our citizens' grand juries. Right. When, when are those getting started up, Larry? Because I want to make sure I can coordinate my schedule. I would say at this point, uh, the first week in May. Okay. That's what we're shooting for. We're making good progress. We have a number of volunteers. We have a place to hold it. Uh, it's going to be in a church, and, of all places. Hmm. And, uh, you know, we're moving ahead, and, and we're mobilizing. We're gathering the evidence. We're ready to go. Nice. So people can go to freedomwatchusa.org to keep abreast of that and to financially support the effort. So I want to ask you guys specifically. I don't think you even need me on the show tonight. No, we do. saying the same stuff that I'm, the same stuff. I mean, this is crazy. And well, I we're confirming the, each I, other, Michael. Yeah, I call it the theater of the absurd because I'm like a citizen too. And um, I was out of journalism for a long time and on the intel side. And I got, these guys, uh, we talk to these people uh, weekly, daily. I, I mean, I'm friends with a lot of these guys and they're laughing. They're like, nobody's going to jail. These people mm. aren't going to jail. This is like another drawn out thing. So when I see this stuff about Nunez is going to make criminal referrals, to who? To who? You think these guys, they're not going to do anything against these high-level guys. Do you realize that these guys are basically blackmail and extortion artists? If they get, if they get jammed up, they're going to spill the beans on what really goes on. Hmm. And believe me, we only know about the tip of the iceberg. And some of the things, I mean, Larry will attest to it, I think. Some of the things, because we, Larry works with confidential whistleblowers and so do we and store stuff they ask us not to print certain things that might come out you know six months a year from now that we've known about but because of agreements we've made with people you don't just go out and run your mouth i mean sure you could get uh hits from that and you could get a surge from that but you just burned a source and then you burned whoever that person uh all their colleagues who might think about giving you a ring when something goes on so I know personally of worse things that have not come out yet, but I'm under like an embargo with people because I made guarantees because that's what you do. You cut deals with in back the back behind the, the curtains. You cut deals with people who are good information people and you don't want to burn them. Also, if somebody's looking at something, you don't want to write something because then you can burn them uh, if something's going on that's active. So these people uh, like Nunez is saying he's going to make criminal referrals. To me, it's like a joke because, like Larry said, who are they going to pinch? The janitor? You know, who's going who's <laughs> yeah. to get who's going to get pinched? These upper guys will take a flamethrower to that city if right. they go down. They'll take yeah, a show, lot of people down biz. with. Yeah, it's showbiz. Right. It's, it's showbiz, and of course, you know, you have this intelligence deep state of the CIA and the NSA and the FBI, 
and stuff will start flying out of files about Nunes and everybody else, and they're not going to pursue. Particularly Barr, who's on the hot seat right now, and you know he's got skeletons. Everybody has skeletons in D.C. Look, in the last several weeks, we've seen that uh, Justice Kavanaugh is siding with Justice Roberts, and they both become liberals. I mean, it's like Zelig. Okay, we know what they probably have on Roberts. I don't want to get into it here, but I've discussed it before. I mean, he's got skeletons in his closet, and also Kavanaugh. You know, with these women and everything, I. Don't know if he did anything or not, but these people feel like they're being blackmailed. And Kavanaugh's now got to lean left because he doesn't want to get impeached because the Democrats would love to do that. Hmm. So this is mutual assured destruction, destruction in Washington, D.C. Well, they don't even actually need any facts, do they? It seems like, you know, the smear machine, we've been through it for the past two years. All they need to do is say some hookers urinated on a bed and suddenly everyone's getting investigated and millions of dollars get spent. It's pretty ridiculous when you think about it. Well, it is. And, you know, this is the world we live in. I keep saying that. That's my favorite expression these days. It used, well, to, be lot... because... it used to be because no one is above the law. Now it's the world we live in. <clears throat> right. We see, now it's, we see now it's two sets, two sets of laws. Now, I right. think both of you Maybe guys... Maybe it's been like that for a while, probably. Uh, I think... But I think with the emergence of social media... Uh, it's really sh sh uh, shown a brighter light on it that there really are two sets of laws. There's a definite uh, class structure in this country, even though uh, I still think it's a fantastic, incredible country where you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You can still do that, and that's why people want to come here. The problem is, is the people that have, have been pulled up by their parents' bootstraps and their uncle's bootstraps and probably couldn't even read a book, uh, watch Dick run, are running Congress, uh, <laughs> yeah, so well, and, right, and, the, and they're in survival mode. They want to stay down there because the gravy train's pretty good down there, right? So that's what we're dealing with. I still think it's obviously it's a great country. I haven't been around for five, six, seven hundred years. There are places that are much older, but it's probably one of the big, greatest countries in the world, world history, right? So we want to keep it that way. The, the challenge is now people are starting to understand. Wait a minute, there's this. There is kind of like a monarchy, a protected monarchy, the deep state protects all these people. And we're getting back to how this whole thing started in the 1700s, when we said, well, well, we don't want to be part of this. We're getting taxed. We don't have any say. And uh, we're a little bit more sophisticated now. You know, there's a lot of things in our lives where we're not going to grab the pitchfork and go for somebody's, uh, you know, abdomen so fast. But uh, there are underlying problems uh, that I think. And I just wanted to mention something to Larry. I, I was talking before you came on, Larry, real quick. I've like, on Twitter, I've checked out. I, I don't want to have any part of this nonsense. It's like a, a hamster wheel of nonsense and nothing gets done and everybody's out to like, uh, to thrash each other. And I was saying before you came on, I've taken a step back from Twitter because I don't think it's productive. I, I, I don't know if that's just a, is this just a byproduct of watching corruption out of control and nothing gets done if just well, tune out is that what happens well let me ask you guys something along those lines because you've said a couple of important things mike social media has become such an important part of everybody's lives and larry you and i have spoken quite a bit about this communications decency act 230 a law that was uh, written back in the day when everybody was using dial-up modems to log on to text-based bulletin board systems. We didn't have this, you know, instant international news cycle with videos being posted. And I mean, look, let's face it, I'm one guy in an apartment here and people watch this show every day. This has supplanted the mainstream news for many people. I know both of you guys and me, uh, we're all pretty unimpressed with MSNBC, CNN, Fox News. And, you know, I was kind of feeling more hopeful about the Devin Nunes referrals, but, you know, the more I listen to what you're saying, I tend to agree. The other thing I noticed is that when I searched for information about Devin Nunes, I wanted to see what was going on with the criminal referrals, but all the top returns on the Google here, it's just talking about this lawsuit against McClatchy. Is this some sort of way of using this lawsuit to distract from the referrals? I don't think it's using to distract, uh, Jason, but uh, it's part of Nunes' effort. Now, look, 
I commend what he's trying to do, okay? He's not trying to do it the right way, and nothing's going to happen. <laughs> uh, for, instance, for instance, when I ran for the U.S. Senate back in 2003, 2004 in Florida, mm -hmm. my theme was I was going to take the concept of Judicial Watch inside of the U.S. Senate. A senator from Florida, I would have over 100 employees, more than I had at Judicial Watch, hmm. double the amount. I had about 50. And I would actually create a law firm inside of the U.S. Senate, and I would sue other U.S. senators, <laughs> sue representatives in Congress, and I, I would love it. legal hell. <laughs> right? So what Nunes is doing, he's saying, well, look, I've been frozen out of you know, running this committee, the House Intel Committee, which, frankly, he didn't do much when he was running it, to be blunt. I mean, he made a lot of noise on Hannity, and that was about it. But the concept is a good concept, but he's not doing it the right way. He's got this lawyer, Biss, who you've had experience with, who's not the sharpest knife in the drawer and is apparently not exactly, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, the Mother Teresa. And he's, and he's bringing lawsuits that are not likely to succeed. So it's, it's showbiz. I mean, and that's the problem here. But if it's done right, if someone inside of Congress would actually use the resources and the power to start a judicial watch or a freedom watch inside of Congress, but it's not going to happen because these people are not up to the task, hmm. it could be quite effective. Right. And Devin Nunes, of course, he wasn't even a lawyer. He was a cattle farmer, a dairy farmer. And uh, I'm curious, why would uh, someone with that type of experience be in the House Intelligence Committee? What, how do we know this isn't an intelligence operation being run on Nunes? Of course, Stephen S. Biss is representing Robert David Steele in the lawsuit against me. Robert David Steele has boasted about running false flags, being a clandestine case officer for the CIA. What if this is a plan to make Nunes look foolish and sabotage his efforts? Nunes has been closely associated with President Trump, and a lot of people who support the president support Devin Nunes. This seems to be crashing his credibility. All the news articles about these lawsuits are just making fun of Devin Nunes. Well, maybe he wants to get a job with, uh, with Trump. You know, Trump, as much as I love the guy, his whole world revolves around Fox News. Mm. Just in the last crazy. few weeks. Just in the last few weeks, he, he, he uh, nominates Stephen Moore as head of the Federal Reserve and Herman Cain as one of the Federal Reserve uh, board members. I mean, my God, he might as well just nominate everybody at Fox News and get rid of the government. It's, it's, it's the point of absurdity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. Some of these people at Fox News are a little sketchy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we got a lot of people at Fox to talk to us, and... Uh, um, if we had deeper pockets, we'd go after some of these people because I know it would result in lawsuits. But some of these people are beyond sketchy. I well, mean, they, got uh, good, you know, they got a few good people over there, but they got a lot of people they got problems with. And yeah. you know, Chris Wallace, Napolitano has become an anti-Trumper, and he makes these legal judgments, which frankly, you know, have no basis. wild. I remember when I was running Judicial Watch, you would always predict that we wouldn't succeed. And in fact, we won every case he predicted we wouldn't well, succeed. And his latest one is that the president has to turn over his tax returns as required by law. Well, I don't right. think he ever heard of the Constitution. Right. It's unconstitutional to have to but, do that. I don't care what law Congress has written in that regard. The so, Politano was the same way on the, the Superior Court judge in Bergen County when I was covering Bergen County, when I was actually ripping Bergen County to shreds, more like it. He was a judge up there, and we used to stop in. He has, like, this flamboyant, you know, he always smelled like he just put on aqua velva. You know, he's got to cover the booze. He's got, well, he's got, I don't, no, I don't think so. He's, like, <laughs> a very uh, suave, suave guy with the cologne and the dress. You know, like, he looked like he was uh, uh, in Goodfellas. You know, he had the big collars, and he's always Who is dressed that? nice. No, Politano, when he was a judge oh. before all this stuff. He was a judge in Bergen County. And there were all kind of rumors floating around about, Napolitano, and like Larry said, I'm not going to get into them on the air, but I could see why somebody maybe has gotten to him and said, hey, if you want the stuff to come out, you better just start singing the tunes. You know, you better go anti-Trump, because there's some good stories floating around about Andy Knapp. There's no doubt about it. And I was coming up in my 20s, and I was like, oh, yeah, really? This guy? I was like, you know, I was a fresh-eyed guy, and, uh, and when you hear stories like that about a judge in a place like Bergen County, you remember them, believe me. Right. Well, yeah, you know, I, I let him go with it, but years ago he took the name Freedom Watch, which infringed our trademark, 
And I, I didn't threaten him. I didn't tell him not to use it. I figured that maybe it was actually increasing the strength of the trademark. Yeah. But, you know, recently it was rumored he was going to come back with his show on Fox Nation and use the name Freedom Watch again. So I politely reminded him that if he did that, it would probably result in a lawsuit. <laughs> so he, he, he came up he came up with a new name. I, I think it's I forgot what it is, but he's lo he's lo he's out of control. He was right with Kavanaugh. I give him credit for that. Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. You know the Fourth Amendment problems. I actually communicated with him on that, but he's lost his mind. And I think that perhaps he wanted a job with Trump. Trump didn't give him a job, and now he's retaliating. Let me ask you yeah, guys this: Yeah, a lot of these guys are a lot of these guys are that shallow, and and that <laughs> people are like, well, what happened to that person? It could be as simple as that. It didn't get. I mean, look at the Kelly <laughs> Conway's husband yeah. has gone off the rails because he wanted a job with the administration, and instead he's tweeting all day and eating tasty cakes. Well, I really feel sorry for her. I don't have it. You know, I don't know how she could stay married to that guy. I mean, that really. Guy's, uh, let me let me ask you know, guys this: because when you're I from Philly, you're, you're from Philly. I'm from Philly. Yeah, it says Kellyanne Conway. Right, and so is uh, her husband. That's like your typical Philly cement head, right? <laughs> he's got a, he's got an education, but it's he's no different from all the uh, you know kind of people walking around here that will, if you spill a beer in a bar, they will try to choke you out or kill you over a beer you know <laughs> these uh, people make no like, sense he looks like he's had one too many cheesesteaks I mean, that's right? what i'm saying he's got the cheesesteaks and the tasty cakes somebody put, put an ankle <laughs> bracelet on him or he's going to have an annual too many soft pretzels water ice and everything else that's not enjoy. the place to live for that guy he needs to move out <laughs> he needs to let me ask you guys this because when i just thing, he wants to take his, his angst out on somebody i remember when i was a kid that the fans at Franklin Field actually booed the squirrel, you know, during halftime. Yeah, Maybe buy a couple season ticket to, to the Eagles game and he can boo the squirrel. Let me refocus right you guys for a second we'll here. I wanna top. I wanna we'll ask you this. Happens. Mike, because I just Googled Judge Knapp when you brought him up, and the first thing that came up is that he's saying Nunez doesn't have a case with this $150 million defamation suit because the standard is so high. If I uh, understand correctly, he's saying that... Well, because he sued McClatchy. And he's a public figure. That's what I wanted to ask you, Mike. You've he been in the news malice. business forever. And, you know, what, what do we make of a sitting politician suing a newspaper for what he claims is character assassination? The Fresno Bee has said they stand by the reporting. I told you earlier today newspapers do not settle or if they do they don't settle early at least that's been my experience he's what my dad would call when i was young he said what are you doing i say x y and z waste my time he'd say you're pissing up a rope hmm. that's what we, that's what they're doing the standard in this is fairly stringent i mean they have to prove that either <laughs> they have to prove that somehow the reporter at mcclatchy hates this guy and printed this with malice and it's knew by it the was time false it gets, Knew it was, well, I mean, I'm not even sure that's a standard anymore against a public figure, right? I mean, if that was the case, uh, the guy who wrote the story about Michael Cohen being in Prague, also from McClatchy, would also be under the microscope, right? So how do you prove whether a reporter knew something was false? He had a bad source. Okay, so who's it on? Is it on the paper? I mean, these are things that are decided in court. Well, you know, Michael, here's the problem, okay? I do a lot of defamation. Okay? Yeah. I sent it to... Uh, Jason's today. I actually there was a profile about me in the Hollywood Reporter of all places. Interesting, and it was nice. It called me the conservative crusader because I've been fighting this law firm, Davis Wright Tremaine, that has defended all these publications that have defamed Trump and and everybody else right. in the conservative community. And in theory, you can get judgments against public figures. You can go against newspapers. I've gotten judgments. I've, I brought a case for myself against Judicial Watch, which I won as a public figure. The uh, Fitton and Company through Judicial Watch defamed me. I won, okay, in Miami. But uh, the problem is the judges. The judges will protect these big corporate media interests, okay? So they'll throw the case out before it goes to a jury, and that's the difficulty that you have. But in theory, you can sue them and you can succeed. And it's not just false. And it's not just misleading, but there's a thing called defamation by implication. Something can even be partially true, and if it holds you out for extreme ridicule in the community, it's also actionable. For instance, years ago in Florida, I bring a lot of cases in Florida, I'm from Florida, uh, a rabbi 
uh, was accused of eating pork. Okay. <laughs> and he sued, and he won. Wow. Because you know, it, it destroyed his uh, rabbinical reputation. Yeah. In the community, it sounds like a Woody Allen movie. I think. <laughs> it it does. Does. A, a, a episode of Curb asked. Your Enthusiasm. Right. Yeah, there, there was a scene there where Woody Allen was eating pork at the at the foot of his wife. You know, when he tied her up or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so. the show, the show has gone off the rails, Jason. No, yeah. but, <laughs> but in the case of Devin Nunes, he's suing McClatchy no, for on, publishing just, a story. Just real quick, I want to say, Larry, you should represent. Me, because the stuff people print about me and I'm some master criminal has been just out of control. Even right. my wife says, can you do anything about this? I said, I don't even know. I mean, these people are, are literally crazy. Some of these well, I'll, I'll represent you, Mike. I brought a case, a, a, a defamation case for Schaefer Cox, Francis Schaefer Cox. Yeah, against, right. Like Bill Fulton, who was a so-called undercover agent who uh, set Schaefer up and got him convicted. It's a long story. We'll do a show maybe someday on it. And uh, Cox claims he's in witness protection. He doesn't appear in the lawsuit. He's evading service of process. He's threatening everybody at the same time. And his libelous book, he's now making a movie about it. So, wow. I mean, he's going to cash in. It's theater of the absurd, as you put it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I'll represent you. I mean, Schaefer was wrongfully convicted, uh, you know, and you were wrongfully dealt with as well. So doesn't well, mean. Well, I mean, um, right back. The, you know? the one guy said that I was part of the Trump administration and I was working with Don Jr. on the Russians, and I was part of this meeting at Trump Tower, and I'm tied in with Eric Prince, and I'm really a uh, an undercover agent, and I'm sitting there thinking, where is this all, all this coming from? <laughs> I don't, you know, I, 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 but it's okay. Look, if the guy tweeted once or twice about it, he tweeted for four days straight. It was like 600 tweets. Is I that mean, the poker guy? guy? T yeah, that's about the guy. The guy, he's a reporter. He's also a lawyer. What's his oh, name? The Jewish yes. guy? Abramson. The guy's a maniac. Abramson. And I'm thinking, yeah. Seth Abramson. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm just a guy who started, wanted to start his own newspaper. I mean, this is really as simple as that. There's no Russian money. There's, believe me, there's no Russian money. If there was, I'd give the address out here where to send the check. <laughs> well, some stuff is so out <laughs> That it's not even actionable. That's how outlandish it was. There's a case, a famous case, where Jerry Falwell was uh, allegedly defamed by Larry Flint for having sex with his mother in an outhouse, and he sued for that. And the court said that was satire at the end, the Supreme right. Court. Wow. And uh, I remember when I was fighting the Clintons, you know, somebody put something up that Bob Barr and I had a homosexual relationship with Jerry Falwell. I mean, you know, nobody can can believe these things. It's just it's unbelievable. It's so it's so it's so bizarre. But you know, you know, you are right though. I, I stand corrected on on the libel stuff. The question is, um, is Nunez even going to be around by the time this thing goes to court? Will Biss even still be licensed by the time it goes to court? Yeah. Who knows what else he has going on? You know yeah. what I mean? Well, I, I, lost are... I lost respect for Nunez because I spent a long time. Uh, a year to two years ago, lobbying Capitol Hill to get them to look at this mass surveillance that was going on, which is much more serious than just an isolated instance here and there. It was serious what happened to the president and the wiretaps and the steel dossier and everything, but it fit in with that. They didn't want to look at it, uh, not just Nunes, but also uh, Burr, Richard Burr of the Richard Senate Burr. Committee, because these intelligence agencies have the dirt on them and they right. can destroy them. So they just want to keep it limited. A very small issue, so there's no blowback. Was that the Hammer Project? Is that what you were working on with the Hammer? I, I, the NSA. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't get into it right. Well, yeah, now. I didn't know if you. I didn't know uh, if it was public or not. It's no big. Don't. Yeah. If it's confidential, I'll talk about. It. But it's funny you say that because I went on a Twitter rampage about a month and a half ago, saying that Nunez, this Nunez, that about. He he, he wanted all the intel on uh, <laughs> FBI corruption, and we were dealing through it. Uh, an intermediary with his office and then it came back that oh well we want your we want to know who in the fbi you've been talking to and i said get the f out of here you're not getting our sources who do you think i just walked out of missouri journalism school and i'm some schlep who thinks you're going to help me you're not getting my sources 
I'll come down there and smack the shit out of you. Who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> and then after that, they were like, whoa, this guy's like, this guy's been around. We better not mess with him after saying that. And I'm thinking, I got off the phone. I said, these guys aren't going to do anything. They're trying to out our sources, probably so they can apply pressure to them on the inside to shut them up. All they have to, all they have to do is threaten to take away a pension, and, 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 and it's done. So, And I'm sitting there thinking, uh, and then there's all this declassification and Nunez. I said, this isn't going to get done. They wouldn't even give the intel we we gave them, which was ironclad and has come out. But again, we gave it to them 18 months. They, they sat on it for 18 months, Larry. And I said, this is ridiculous. We're coming out with these stories. Because, as a, again, as a courtesy, we had sat on information because they wanted to give, the, quote, unquote, give the information to the inspector general. And they didn't want it public because they wanted to get up on the comms of these FBI guys, look at their phones, look at their, you know, uh, communications, etc. And so we sat back, and they did nothing. They stalled, and they probably told them, these guys in the FBI that we knew this stuff and for them to get rid of all the evidence. That's how these guys operate, even wow. a guy like Nunez. I know well, it sounds well, look, crazy. You know, and, and people are, are you know saying, well, Michael Horowitz, the inspector general, he's going to do something. Wait for his no, report. What has he done in all these no, years? Doing anything. He, he no. whitewashed everything. It was right. unbelievable. And not, not a lot of people know this. One of the, <clears throat> what happened with Nunez behind the scenes is one of his chief aides got in this really bad car accident. It's like a suspicious car accident, okay? And they all got freaked out. So I think if they were thinking about, you know, ratting anybody out in the FBI, that changed after this mystery car accident. But that's not supposed to be public, and I didn't give the guy's name, so I don't really, you know, I don't, I, I don't really care. I don't owe these people anything. They're all full of shit as far as I'm concerned. Well, and, when and, you de- yeah. And that, and that's the perfect you know way to describe Congress today. I mean, it's nobody takes it seriously. It, it doesn't do anything. We've got one person in government who actually has his head in the right place, and that's the president. And I support the president. He makes some mistakes every now and then. He gets bad advice. Judges yeah, he does get bad advice. Puts the, the judges he's put on the bench aren't terribly good. They're not that much different than the Obama and Clinton appointees, frankly. But because he's getting the bad advice from the Federalist Society or American Conservative Union lobbyists in Washington. Sometimes people pay to get recommendations, you know, to get on the bench even. But this president really, he's fearless, but he's surrounded by people who, generally speaking, don't represent his interests very well. And I'm glad that he fires people from time to time. It's good that he fires people. I hope he fires yeah, th- Bolton. What do we think about, you know, declaring the uh, the Iranian National Guard a terrorist organization? I may differ with you on that one, Jason. I think that was a good idea. It you is- like Bolton, don't you, Larry? I do like Bolton. Yeah. He's kind of a train wreck. I've spoken to a number of people who have dealt with him personally, and he, uh, one guy that I spoke with in New Zealand was a member of the, uh, I forget the acronym, but it's an international body dedicated to eradicating chemical weapons. And this guy that I was interviewing was part of it, and they were about to release a report in 2002, I think, which said that Iran, uh, Iraq had no chemical weapons. Bolton flew to New Zealand, threatened directly the Brazilian diplomat who was the head of this thing, threatened to destroy his life if he released the report. The report didn't get released. I mean, the Brazilian guy resisted, and they did all kinds of bad stuff to him. And then, of course, we invaded Iraq. Well, he was I'm working afraid for Bush, Bolton's a He was working warmer. for Bush. Yeah. Well, you know, I do believe that Saddam Hussein did have chemical weapons. He had anthrax. It was Cheney and Rumsfeld and the rest of them that gave it to him. Right. I believe that, it, that if he had any smarts at all, which he didn't have terribly a lot at the end, you know, he, he had it uh, transported to Syria, who, who now has chemical weapons. So I don't blame Bush for that. I really don't like George W. Bush, and I don't like Cheney, and I don't like Rumsfeld, I, what they did to this country, getting us into unnecessary wars. But but uh, I don't fault Bolton for that. And the Ira- Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard is a terrorist organization. Out in Los Angeles, for instance, perhaps you know this, Jason, there are 40 so-called Iranian broadcast stations in the valley. Mm-hmm. and 40? Yeah, they're nearly all owned, in effect, by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard because they couldn't stay afloat financially if they weren't laundering money through Dubai for advertising. And that's why, out of these stations, you don't find much criticism of Iran. Uh, but they are here. The FBI has the largest counterterrorism operation with regard to Iran in Los Angeles. 
and there are about a million and a half Iranians in Los Angeles. They call it tarantulas, <laughs> and not all of them are friendly. So, uh, and and much of them, many of them, work for the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Hmm. Yeah, don't forget, I wrote a book about these guys in Iran and the the intel community. They don't want to. They don't want to. Uh, I was surprised a little bit by Bolton, but at the same time, I think he's probably not being. Um, harsh enough, but you can't really drop a lot of these truths on, on Americans uh, too fast. You have to kind of wade, wade into the water and introduce them to the fact that um, the, the, uh, what he's talking about, too, is they definitely have definitive ties to Al-Qaeda. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, you right. talk to any absolute, yeah. the Revolutionary Guard as well. Huh. Okay. Yeah, well, I actually sued the Revolutionary Guard for the families of extortion 17 right and right lawsuit that's pending there's a default that's been entered and we're looking to go to a trial for a default judgment with regard to iran and the revolutionary guard the taliban we've been trying to get karzai served he's been hiding uh but uh yeah these are bad people and iran had a bounty the revolutionary guard was paying uh a five thousand dollars for each dead gi in afghanistan ten thousand for each armored vehicle that was destroyed. And, and uh, I think it was Charlie Strange who told us that Iran was making the detonators for IEDs in Iraq. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Uh, What's going know, on with that trial for extortion 17, Larry? When do you expect that will happen? Well, it, it's, in, it's in front of the, not one of my favorite judges in D.C. I've been, you know, wrestling with her for decades. She's slow rolling it. But we do have a default judgment. Uh, we've been trying to serve Karzai for years through the embassy in Kabul. We finally served him by Twitter. I hope the judge will sustain that because he's the one who broke the news of Extortion 17. I believe they paid him off. He's one of the most corrupt world leaders of all time to disclose uh, the coordinates of the helicopter that was shot down by the Taliban. And we believe this was done in exchange or at least, you know, to give something back to the Taliban after Osama bin Laden was allegedly killed. I say allegedly. Um, I think he died of natural causes. I don't think he was killed. He looks a lot like Ben Kingsley, doesn't he? Karzai? Yeah. Yeah. I, actually, when I ran Judicial Watch, we had a, a show called the Judicial Watch Report. I had some of his relatives on TV. I mean, they're, they're bright people, but they're highly corrupt. Hmm. I'm sure what that... It's funny you mentioned that about IEDs because when I wrote this crazy book, one of the guys in it I refer to as the Swede, Tom Orist, one of the most decorated intel guys in the country you never heard of. But when I sat down with him to uh, talk about the book, he started talking about he had been trying to get the government to act on this IED problem. Uh, he said that they were making one part in Iran and one part in Iraq, and then they'd meet and they'd put the two parts together for IEDs, right? And nobody would do anything. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. I'm interested in bin Laden. I don't care about IEDs. But that always stuck with me because I'm like, wait a minute. Now, he said he, he, they were talking about this for years before anybody was even on the radar. So, and Arist was, he was active in intelligence in the early 2000s before he retired, 2000 to mid, mid-2000s. So when you bring up IEDs, I immediately th reach for this book. And it's not like some kind of shameless plug. I don't really care if anybody buys another book. I'll probably be using them to keep the door open in the next <laughs> couple months. But the way, right? But Orist, is, and he kept saying, you got to look into IEDs. You got to look into IEDs. And I'm like, I'm, in, in my mind, I'm like tunnel vision. I'm thinking about bin Laden and Iran. And he also said that, you know, obviously, he specifically told the government that bin Laden was in Iran knew the exact place, this is in early 2000s, okay, after 9-11, knew the exact place he was. They didn't want to do anything, so he put his own task force together to go do it, and oh, they yeah. threatened him with arrest. They threatened the guy with arrest, right? So when you, when somebody, like when Bolton says that these guys are, are criminals, the Iranians and the, the Revolutionary Guard, he's not being, he's sugarcoating it. These people are terrorists. They're part of al-Qaeda. Uh, we have the documents from from Brennan in his discussions with the Saudi ministers. The Saudi ministers, the interior minister who actually became the, the crown prince, told Brennan, it's in the book, 
Bin Laden is either in Iran, all right, or his sons are there running Al Qaeda. And, and Brennan, at the time, who was working as the uh, Intel, Homeland Security Intel for Obama, straight out of the White House, said, yeah, this is his response. Islam is not being properly represented in the U.S. It's getting a bad name. Well, look. I'm, think, I'm thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. The guy just told you that the bin Laden family is running Al Qaeda from Iran, and you're worried well, about the image of Islam. Bre Brennan reportedly converted to Islam. He, he, you know, he had a prayer rug, some people claim, in his office. Yeah. It's, I, it's unbelievable. I, there's no doubt about it. But the, the point is, is that Bolt, see, this is something that's probably boiled over for years with the Iranians. And like I told you earlier today, Jason, what has the U.S. gotten out of Iran? It's just a double talk, right? And then Obama sent them this payoff so they keep their mouths shut about certain things that are really going on. Billions of dollars. Uh, so as far as well, I'm concerned, uh, you know, it, it was eye-opening talking to actual people who, who worked Iran ops and were saying, these people are just evil, man. Tonight we're going to find out who won elections in Israel. From the last report I saw, Netanyahu was slightly behind um, his opponent, I forget his name, uh, former uh, chief of staff of the Israeli Defense Force. But, you know, Netanyahu, and I'm sure people will disagree with me on this show, I mean, he's in partly in political trouble because he's all talk and no action, is that when he could have taken care of Iran and eliminated the nuclear threat, he didn't. He cowered to Obama. And when he could have taken care of Hamas on two occasions, he also cowered to Obama. And he's thought of as a very weak leader in Israel with all of his bellicose pronouncements lately. And that's the reason why he's getting more strident and, and moving you know, to support more right wing parties to bring them in. But it is a real tragedy that this country, you know, allowed Iran to become the huge power which it is, which it is today. Didn't and, Israel you know, use that Stuxnet virus to blow up the Iranian uh, centrifuges? It set it back for a while, but, you know, the Iranians figured it out and they repaired it. Look, nobody said the Iranians aren't smart. First of all, the Iranians aren't Arabs, okay? They're, they're Persians, okay? The, the Arabs haven't won a war for 6,000 years. But the Iranians are, are quite capable and, and they are a real threat. So, you know, in my view, uh, you know, frankly, I hope they provoke us into some kind of action. I don't want to kill civilians yeah, over there. Yeah. But if we, if we could take care of the military and knock out their their nuclear facilities, I think it would be good before this thing goes further because they have uh, the intercontinental miss missile capability right now. We can't let this continue on. Larry brings up a very good point, real quick. <clears throat> Just let me throw this in here. It's like the monkey wrench in the program. Remember the, these FBI guys high place guys like Comey and McCabe, uh, and people think they're going to jail, mm. they would blow the roof off of this, what's really been going on with Iran and the side deal, what was behind this cash side deal and things like that. There's much more to it, to it that none of us know, including myself. But if you've been in the game long enough, you know that w what's going on. There's definitely some kind of deal. The FBI is definitely in on it. Right, because Brennan and Comey, they're all in the same bed. Clapper, all these guys, right? Nothing happens in the country without these guys rubber stamping it, especially when it comes to Iran, Intel, State Department, Hillary. It would be probably a massive scandal to find out what really went on. And that's their get out of jail free card. I would use it. Yeah, why does Trump free care, free? though? Wouldn't he just say burn all those guys down? No, no. I think it's, I, I think there's, formally being on the inside and doing certain things, I think there are certain things that would rock this country to its core and maybe throw D.C. off its axis and people would be completely aghast. Uh, that's just my thing. And I think that there's probably something linked to Iran based on the folks I've talked to uh, and just the things that I know that they've reported to the government that was never even looked into. I can only imagine the high-level stuff that was behind all that cash to, went to Iran and the fact that, like Larry said, uh, a program, a nuclear program that was once sidetracked, all of a sudden was just left to grow and blossom and recover and rise from the ashes, so to speak, like a phoenix. 
Okay, we could have crushed that 25 times, but no, Obama kept allowing them, and then eventually making massive billions, of 151 billion dollar cash payout to these people. Too bizarre. Okay, to f what do you think they're going to do with that money? Pay what do you terrorists. Think they're going to do with that money. Well, and they've well, they've, they've, they've armed gonna, Hezbollah. Gonna, yeah, Hezbollah. That's what they're going to do with the money. These rockets from Hamas, they're not terribly sophisticated, the ones that have been used, but but Iran has supplied very sophisticated rockets to Hezbollah and Hamas, more Hezbollah, and there are tens of thousands of rockets trained on Israel as we speak, and we allowed that threat to occur. Now, you can't even take them out if you want to. I mean, it's, it's a problem. It's like North Korea. Well, know? yeah, especially now that you have the, the, the uh, Iran has some... Uh, strange allies like france okay they do a lot of business together and uh a lot of the whistleblowers that have come to the government with dirt on iran the cia turns them over to french intelligence and they say wait a minute i work for u.s intelligence why am i talking to french intelligence oh because the they, they have more of a vested interest right the cia doesn't even take whistleblower complaints about iran they kick it over to french intelligence if you can believe this it's it's insane well the french uh, uh, probably have a deep state as well. I'll tell you, what's interesting yeah. is when the Iran agreement was being negotiated, it was a socialist government in France and the, and the foreign minister, Laurent Fabius, who opposed what Obama was doing. So they have their own problems over there. The Germans also collaborate on these things, although they also helped with uh, the Stuxnet virus. So they play both sides of the street. The Europeans are very good at playing both sides of the street. So are we, for that matter. And... Uh, you know, this is why we're in the deep shit that we are today. Excuse the French. The you know, I didn't well, realize I mean, this, guys, but there was point. a report submitted to Congress just last week about the status of Iran's nuclear program. And uh, have we heard anything about this? This is from USNI News. Uh, I don't know what that is, but some sort of nuclear institute. And they're asking if Iran is capable of building nuclear weapons. Well, if it's a report on the, uh, I, I I'm not familiar with it. I, if it was major, I think it would we would have seen something you, on. You can rest assured that Iran, within days, can assemble nuclear weapons, if uh, if it wants to, and they now have intercontinental ballistic capability, at least intermediate range, that can hit Israel, can hit Europe, and they recently launched a satellite. So this is the situation that we're in today. So. It's just it's untenable. But my point earlier was with a, you could do a lot of things with $151 billion. You can lure a lot of people to right. work for you instead of, uh, you know, being under threat of uh, termination, so to speak, uh, not being like fired in the U.S., but being like terminated. Right. Uh, it's a new ball game when somebody hands you a, a free $151 billion. It's massive. It's massive. And, uh, and these are sophisticated people. They're, they're not country bumpkins. Look at Beverly Hills. It's owned by the Iranians. I mean, you know, they're, they're very hardworking people, educated people. I mean, most of them in this country, you know, don't want to see that regime become nuclear at all. But a lot of them still have relatives back there. And that's why you don't see much pressure being put on by the Iranian people, either Jewish or Muslim, against that regime because they're kind of held hostage with their relatives that are still there. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, it was a very progressive place in the 60s and 70s if you went through there in the 60s and 70s, you would think you'd be like Los Angeles or something. People, women walking around the streets in skirts and people hanging out. It's like, looks uh, somewhat like an American city. I mean, minus the architecture. Uh, there, was, there was religious tolerance. Jews and Christians right. could exist there. I think the Shah was a great man. He did what he had to do at the time, keep the Soviet Union from coming in. And a little history lesson, and at least Larry Clayman style, is that Jimmy Carter comes along, the idiot that he was, and Zig Brzezinski, the father of the other idiot that's yes. on the uh, morning yeah. show. Yeah, Brzezinski, Jesus. Right. Okay. And he, his comment was, let the Ayatollah take over because a religious fanatic is not going to want communism in, in Iran and keep the Soviet Union out. So what they got was worse than the Soviet Union. They got yeah. these, these lunatics. I mean, Jimmy Carter is hated by all Iranians, uh, regardless of their political persuasion. It's an idiot. It's it's funny, uh, not a lot of people know this, but the guy that they sent over, they sent a crew over to Iran, the intel community in the U.S. at the same exact time, okay? 
I think, to undermine what was going on, undermine the stability of, of, the, of the Iranian government. And it was, uh, a lot of people are familiar with Strzok, Peter Strzok for the FBI. Right. His old man, his right. old man was part of that late 60s, early 70s Iran op from the U.S., going in there under a USA aid type thing, you know, that he's there to help teach people how to farm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, USAID. but he was really there. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, USAID. Uh, so he, like when people say, oh, this struck guy, who's the struck guy? He comes from, a, the FBI struck comes from a long line of skullduggery. Spooks. Yeah. yeah, spooks, well, spooks. Pe yeah. People in the chat, Mike, are asking about Bob Levinson, uh, very conspicuously left Behind, despite that hundred and fifty well, million know, we, dollar payment, we have a we have a, a, a Levinson whistleblower. Uh, but again, like you know, I might have to sit down with Larry about this guy. He he can't go to anybody. Like he's terrified to go to anybody. Go kill him. He, he I sat. Oh, he worked with Levinson. Okay, they were doing work in Iran, and I can't go into what they were doing uh, on here because I don't want the guy to be compromised. But and. Here's another case we talked about earlier, okay? I could blow people out of the water with this story. But this, and if I was maybe in my 20s and stupid, I, I you know, might take a shot at it if I'm looking for the, to make a name for myself. But I'm, I'm a lot wiser now and, and also know that this guy has a family and, and um, you don't want to put somebody like that in danger when they entrust you with information. But the Levinson story is very deep, and they do not want him to come back with the chance that he might actually start talking about this stuff. And that would be very, very bad. Yeah. So uh, there's nobody for this guy to turn to. Uh, he wanted to meet with Whitaker. He said, I'll only talk to Whitaker. This is when Whitaker was a sitting AG. Hmm. And I said, all right, well, we'll try to, we'll try to get you with Whitaker. But the, by the time we made arrangements, Whitaker's gone. Now is he going to sit with Barr? I don't even think this guy trusts Barr. Because don't hmm. forget, Barr was in... Barr's been in the machine Iran for Contra. a long time. Well, Barr's got so many problems right now, you're not going to get his attention on anything. Right, you know? right. So, but, but yeah. I mean, even beyond that, I don't think this guy trusts Barr. So now he's like saying, well, you know, the secret's going to die with me, I guess. Uh, and I, we know some of it, but he hasn't told me all the, he, what he uh, has termed all the really good stuff. So there's definitely smoking guns there. And, and you would, from an intel perspective, you would want a guy like Levinson to wither on the vine in Iran. You don't want him to come home. He, he could be a loose cannon. Hmm. Um, you know, he, he's a loose end. He's a deep state loose end. You want him in a controlled environment in Iran where, he, you know, he's, he's not living in a, in a prison anymore. He's living in a, like a home confinement situation. And you want to know where he is at all times and the fact that he has no access to the U.S. media. No Twitter. Especially especially Twitter. He could get on there one night at 3 a.m. and say, screw this, I'm blowing the lid off of all this crap. And they definitely do not want a guy like that on the loose. That's my opinion, and based on people that we've dealt with uh, on the Levinson matter. Larry, what kind of problems do you think Barr has, just everybody all over him, about releasing the Mueller report? Yeah, I mean, he's going to be taken apart uh, by the left, by the Nadlers, by the Schiffs by the rest of them, Mark Warner over in the Senate. And, you know, he was pretty cool today when he testified, but wait till, <laughs> wait till he releases the report a week from now, all heck's going to break loose. And the Democrats don't care that the president was exonerated. They'll pull any piece of you-know-what out of that report that they can mm. uh, okay. to, to smear everybody. And I might add, uh, my client Jerry Corsi and my friend wrote a, a very good column uh, that appeared as an opinion piece in the Washington Times. It was published this morning. Go to freedomwatchusa.org to see it or go to larryclayman.com. And what he's basically saying is you better not release my grand jury information. Jerry was not indicted. Right. Or I'll have my lawyer, Larry Clayman, sue you, uh, Adam Schiff and you, Nadler and the rest of them, uh, because you simply can't do that. But, but he's going to bend. Barr will bend. He is establishment. And uh, you can't expect that much of it's going to stay confidential in the end. Well, let me ask you yeah, this, because... Even the stuff that's redacted is fair game once that thing flies out. The stuff that's redacted will eventually be leaked. That's my contention. So a guy like Corsi, they're going to release it, and they'll, let's say they uh, redact any portion, have to deal with uh, any of his testimony. It'll eventually be leaked. 
and it's basically non-traceable, as you know. They'll say, oh, we don't know who leaked it. It's, it could be anybody, and it literally could once it hits the hits the skid, so to speak. So uh, I think Corsi is probably smart to be concerned. Right. And um, and it wouldn't surprise me if every word that's redacted and when it comes to a guy like Stone or a guy like Corsi uh, will be leaked, while anything that's redacted on a uh, somebody on the left will never be leaked. That's right. And Jerry doesn't have anything to worry about the substance of it, but, you know, he had family members that were referenced, other people that were referenced, their identities and this and that, and these people could be put at risk because, you know, these leftists, they're, they're, to use a phrase from the president, they're animals. You never well, know what's going to happen. It's They'll become a regular three practice of smearing people. So, of course, they would just find anything well, in I, there. And violence, you know? I mean, you got the Ilham Omars out there that are inciting violence against Jews and Christians and and others, and, and, you know, Cortez and, and everybody else. And, you know, occasionally some lunatic uh, white guy threatens somebody like Omar, and it's, it's, you know, all of a sudden it's a big issue. It should be an issue. Nobody should be threatened. But it's, it's going to primarily come from the left against people that are conservatives, people of faith, and on the right. We're, one thing I wanted to point out at, at the end, maybe we can do a show on this, is I think everybody should read the book Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. Because that's where we are today. Everything's being dumbed down. Uh, everybody's supposed to be the same. Nobody's supposed to achieve. Uh, and you know, now we talk about reparations and the Middle East. Hey, I want reparations for building the pyramids. You know. <laughs> so, it's a, it's a yeah, high I want, hourly I want rate. Reparations for, I want reparations for being an altar boy. I mean, nothing <laughs> happened to me, but I want a piece of those big settlements. Some of my exactly. friends got. You yeah, know, we, I mean, we, this could go on forever. And Michael, like we it. want a piece of the pies, Jefferson. Yeah. The show used to say, I want a piece it's of the It's actually well, crazy. Let's... It's like, well, you're not supposed to go through life and have hardships. Who said life was supposed to be easy? It's just not, life is not easy. There's hardships. There's peaks and valleys. Well, the other and, thing is anybody no, who... Life isn't a straight line of fun. Anybody who's looking for reparations right now wasn't alive when the transgressions occurred. So it's a little bit kind of a... Strange thing. Let me ask well, you, you guys talking this. About, you're talking about slavery. I'm talking about slavery, the Holocaust, all of this stuff. It's like, you know, as you're saying, what about the uh, Native Americans? I mean, where do we stop I with reparations? I think they probably want some reparations. Well, let me tell you the way it'll work, Jason. There was, may his soul rest in peace, Andrew Breitbart. We were working on this around the time he died. It was called the Pigford Settlements. Yeah. Yeah. Where these cases came through, class actions, and they were settled by Obama. And any African American that could remember that he applied for a loan, uh, an agricultural loan, didn't even need documentation, got $40,000 off the top. Okay, And if you actually had documentation and you could show damage, it was unlimited. So uh, Andrew was exposing that at the time, and that may have been one reason why uh, he ultimately was killed. I don't believe he died of natural causes. I really don't. Well, and of course, Lee Stranahan has mentioned that Pigford's story is one of the first things he had worked on with Breitbart. I think we might be uh, maybe run out of time to talk about that, but let me ask you guys this in closing, because despite being a total idiot, Adam Schiff did graduate from Harvard Law School. How can he justify demanding the release of this Mueller report with the grand jury information? I mean, why isn't he saying, look, even though we don't like Donald Trump, we have to respect the Constitution and the rights of American citizens above and beyond whoever might be holding the office of president, and we simply can't compromise the notion of people being presumed innocent until proven guilty? Five so, words. He's a dishonest yeah. political hack. And, you know, unfortunately, I think there are more that come out of Harvard Law School than some other places, frankly. Mike. Don't forget, he, he's running for re-election, and uh, where, he, where he serves as a congressman, okay, there are a lot of conservatives out there uh, in California. I mean, a lot of people would be surprised, but California is our biggest readership through the years of True Pundit. Hmm. You would never think that. Uh, I, I'm surprised. California, well, but, but there are a lot of people who are conservatives who lean left or have a lot of leftist ideologies. And so he's pandering to his base, who uh, I would say a conservative in a um, different part of the country. And Texas is much different in many ways from a conservative in his district in California. Okay, so he's worried about getting elected again. So no, he's going right. to say what he has to do. 
You're, you're right, uh, Michael. You know, California has a lot of very hardcore conservatives as well because they feel so yeah. alienated. Such a big state, you know, nearly 40 million people that even if it's a minority, it's more conservatives than in other states, but they're not the majority, so they lose everything politically. But, yeah. but Adam Schiff is the congressman from West Hollywood, okay, as well. So, you know, he's pretty far left. And speaking of minorities, you know, Adam Schiff is tweeting crap every day, and I tend to tweet back at him, uh, you know, retorts yeah, you're, along you're with... Yeah, you're trying to pick a fight with him, man. The well, I want to know why they're snap. not investigating this guy, Ed Buck, when two black male prostitutes, actually irrespective of their race, when two prostitutes are dead in your house from crystal meth overdoses, that sounds like a lot of evidence of crime. Why is this guy not being investigated? That's the new California, three strikes and you're out. It takes three dead people. Third dead person. Uh, right. Third dead person triggers an investigation. <laughs> I mean, it's hey, yeah, That's a good question. I mean, three strikes you know. and you're out if you're white, okay? If not, you get off like yeah. Jesse Smollett, okay? Yes, yeah, Smollett. No. If, so, if the, my mailman gets a paper burn, I'll be under investigation, okay? <laughs> this guy's got two dead people. Yeah. If he gets a paper cut, I'm going to be in front of a grand jury. I mean, this guy's I, got dead people hanging out. Even if they no weren't problem. dead, I would think if the cops came over to your place twice and found crystal meth, that would put you in jail for a long time, no? Well, they looked pretty damn hard. They would have found it if I had any, because they- No, 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 I'm talking about shred. Ed Buck. I'm talking about Ed well, Buck. I'm talk, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about me. I mean, they, it's like this guy, it was what we started out talking about. Okay, there's two sets of rules for two sets of people. And this is, this is, uh, a recipe for disaster if it continues, I think, unless people are complacent and they don't want to do anything about it. That's a whole another show, a whole another series of shows. And it's uh, one of the reasons a guy like Drudge is checked out. He's said as much. He's disappointed in the, the, the American people. They, they put up with this nonsense and they never seem to fight back and they just take it. And so a guy like Drudge says, why am I going to put my butt on the line? And, uh, you know, I've been reading a lot about Drudge because I consider him a, a pioneer. And, and I'm more interested in what happened to him. W what triggered such a, a 180 uh, re in recent years? And I think that's part, part of uh, uh, what happened to him. He's disappointed with the quote-unquote electorate who lets these people get away literally with murder. Well, what, 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 what happened to him? What you're talking about. He's not reporting like he used to or, or what? No, he's, it's definitely, you know, what you would consider – there's a noticeable difference. Like he's checked out. Um, he's taken stuff. And he said, he has said as much in the limited public appearances that he has when he was on Alex Jones. He said, I've, I've had it with people. They, yeah. they put up with too much. I mean, th this is coming from him, his words. They put up with too much. They, and we do. We're, we're, I think we're over tolerant when it comes to corruption. Well, we're headed for a revolution. That's where we're headed. I mean, we're headed for not, something. But, yeah. yeah. Well, and I don't, I don't advocate, I don't want to see violence or whatever, but at some point, a significant minority of this country is going to light the fuse over what's going on. You know, the one thing I want to say, because we are almost out of time here, but when you're talking about Matt Drudge and a change in his reporting, it reminds me of another person who, I, I think, Larry, maybe you know this guy, uh, I'm talking about Chris Ruddy, who wrote the book, the strange death of Vince Foster, which had to irritate the Clintons, I would think, because he was kind of implicating them in a potential murder. But here he is, smiling. Yeah, but the bubble. guy like cashed in. Correct. Then they didn't the, the Newsmax. Clintons set him up with something. They Something set him like up with that. Newsmax. Yeah. So I mean. So what I'm getting at is, is it possible, Mike? Business. Is it possible that when someone like Matt Drudge, when someone like Chris Ruddy gets too close? Someone comes to them and says, hey, in this hand, I got a tombstone, and in this hand, I got a $1.5 million hey, man. check. Man, anything's possible when, when you're talking with this cabal of people. That's what I've learned, especially in the last three years. It's been a real eye-opener for me. Like, I was still kind of a believer even three or four years ago that, you know, good triumphs over evil in this country and everything. I'm not so sure anymore, man. I'm pretty – I mean, I – and, and people thought I was cynical a couple of years ago, and I'll let Larry talk about this because he's been in this game longer than I have for, from, you know, fighting D.C. Man, I'm worried. I, I think that there's a level and a degree of evilness that, that most people can't even fathom. Hmm. And, uh, and, and stuff that I've seen through the years and things that I've covered, I'm starting to think 
who was behind some of these schemes? Who were behind some of these people that got whacked? And I start to think, you know, you put the pieces together as an investigator, and you have to be careful sometimes. You might find some things you don't want to find. Like, sometimes the truth is a little bit too much to handle. And I think we're at that stage uh, of, of, of D.C. politics. So, yes, absolutely, these, these people are capable of anything. Don't forget, they just want to survive and make more money. They'll do whatever they can, as long as it involves the least amount of work. If they have to cut some throats, hey, that's cool. I mean, maybe I'm just cynical, Larry. No, you're not cynical, Michael. That's that's where we are today. And, you know, it's gotten progressively worse. It was always that way. I mean, you can't tell me that presidents of the United States haven't had people hit. You know, I don't think it was just Clinton that had people hit. But it's gotten so bad. There's no truth. There's, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, a shit show in the legal profession right now. It's a disgrace. It was a disgrace when I founded Judicial Watch in 1994. It's beyond a disgrace now. It's 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 completely gone. The legal system, for all intents and purposes. Well, I want to thank both of you guys for joining me tonight. People should definitely go visit freedomwatchusa.org. Did we lose Michael there? Michael, I don't know. I'm still here. Am I He's still been here? kidnapped. The picture went away. They got me. <laughs> okay. Did the picture Good. go away? I have a face for radio. <laughs> People can go to Freedom Watch USA and support Larry and his crew over there, freedomwatchusa.org, of course, and people should be getting their news every day from truepundit.com. Always lots of good reporting on True Pundit, and you can still purchase a copy of Michael's book, How We Dismantled the FBI in Our Pajamas. That's a true There's only a few piece. left, Yeah, uh, and we're probably going to get rid of them. Yeah, It's either we sell them in the next two weeks or I'm taking them down to Goodwill. Right. They're not going to be propping up the dining room table anymore. No, so. no, no, no. Right now they are the dining room table. It's pretty pretty go. lean around here. There you go. There you go. Uh, right, we, we, no, but hey, I appreciate you coming on, Larry. So yeah. It's always good Thanks, to talk. Thanks, Mike. Great to see talk, you. Talk. Yeah, it's always good to uh, talk. I'm Rad. Both of you guys. Thanks very much. And thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see everybody tomorrow. Take care. That's not right. That's not right. <laughs>